This is RockShox brand new Super Deluxe Coil Ultimate, and today we'll be telling you about three features this shock has that no other coil shock on the market can match. My name is Tor, I'm with the Losco, let's get into it. With every generation of new products, manufacturers like RockShox try to cram as much innovation as they can into their fresh product line, and the Super Deluxe Coil Ultimate is no different. RockShox has completely redesigned both the damper and the chassis, and this shock is built around their brand new RC2T damper. This damper has a rebound knob with 20 clicks, low and high speed compression knobs with five clicks each, a brand new hydraulic bottom out adjuster with five clicks, and to top it off, a lockout lever that gives a seriously rock solid climbing platform. It comes in a whole bunch of sizes that fits on pretty much any trail, enduro, or downhill bike. And you can choose between a stealth black coil or the classic RockShox red coil. I have been riding the heck out of this thing for a few months now, and I have been really impressed. Just like a bunch of other high-end coil shocks, the Super Deluxe is crazy sensitive and gives you that ground-hugging feel, but that is actually not why we're here. There are three specific features of this shock that really set it apart from the competition. And that first feature is the hydraulic bottom out control. Coil shocks are inherently linear, so it's gonna be easier to use all of your travel when compared to an air shock. A linear leverage rate means that it takes the exact same amount of force to compress the shock the entire way through the travel. And most coil shocks have a little rubber bump stop right at the end of their stroke, and that absorbs the impact of bottoming out. The Super Deluxe Coil has that same rubber bottom out bumper, but it's also got the adjustable hydraulic bottom out or HBO for short. When you enter the last 20% of your travel, a stanchion inside of your stanchion, that's crazy, enters your HBO chamber and it pushes oil into the piggyback of the shock. With this little purple three millimeter adjuster, you're able to control how quickly the oil can rush into the piggyback and adjust your end stroke ramp up. Less oil flow means more bottom out resistance, keeping you from clanging off the bottom on those big scents. Now when you send it into the next zip code, you'll have a comfy hydraulic pillow waiting for you at the bottom of your stroke. What does this feel like on the trail? Well, anticlimactically, not that much. What? But that's actually a good thing, nice. because every time you would feel the clang of a bottom out, you just don't. You won't feel like you're running out of travel because it happens in such a controlled manner. I have been running this shock on my Transition Spire, which has a 23% progression in its leverage curve, and we don't want to get too into the weeds about which bikes coil shocks work best on, but I usually prefer running coil shocks on bikes with about 25% or more progression. With the stock link, I ran my HBO in the plus two setting, right in the middle, giving my shock a nicely supported end stroke. This, <laughs> it's just a matter of time. This was super comfortable for normal trail riding around here in Bellingham, but I also spent a day riding up in the Whistler bike park. And after the feeling the bottom out a little more than I'd like, I gave it another click to take the edge off those big compressions that Whistler's known for. Setting up your HBO is a little different to any other suspension setting because you'll know that it's dialed in when you literally can't even notice it. If you're running too much HBO, it'll feel like you're bottoming out before you run out of travel. And if you aren't running enough HBO, then you'll actually run out of travel and feel that bottom out. Once you find that Goldilocks setting right in the middle, you'll get that bottomless feeling of just kissing that rubber bump stop at the end of travel before rebounding back. I've also been playing around with this Cascade Link, which slightly changes the rear suspension characteristics of the bike and increases the progression leverage ratio up to 28%. With the aftermarket link, I ran the HBO in the plus one setting and let the kinematics of the linkage do more of the heavy lifting when it comes to the end stroke. HBO opens up the compatibility of coil shocks to a wider range of bikes with less progression in their leverage ratios. And I would personally run this shock on any frame with at least 20% progression. Does this mean that you can't run the shock on a frame with less progression than that? Definitely not. It just comes down to personal preference, and I just prefer a little more progression in the rear end. I know plenty of people who ride coil shocks on bikes with a fairly linear leverage curve with no issue. And this shock also works on bikes with even more progression than the Spire. When the HBO is fully open, there's still a little bit of added compression that lasts 20% of the stroke, but it is really similar to another coil shock that doesn't have HBO and is definitely more linear than any other air shock out there. When you run a coil shock on a more linear bike, you often have to increase your spring rate and run less sag than recommended to keep from bottoming out a little too often. And for those bikes, HBO is a game changer. Running too stiff of a coil defeats the purpose of a coil shock because you're losing out on that super supple initial stroke that we love coil shocks for. With HBO, you can run the right spring rate, damn it, <laughs> spring rate, white weight and bike and <laughs> spring weight for your bike. Holy crap. <laughs> with HBO, you can run the right spring weight for your bike and weight without having to compromise on your end stroke performance. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Mike, I'm the owner of The Lost Co, and I'm just popping by to remind you that we don't just make super cool videos, we also have a full service bike shop with a super dialed online store with the parts that you need to have fun on two wheels. 
TheLostGo.com is super easy to navigate, has a live inventory to see exactly what we have in stock on the shelves and ready to ship. Shipping is free over $49 in the USA for most parts. Plus, we have same day shipping for orders placed before 2.30 p.m. Pacific time on weekdays. Bah! Woo! Plus, when you contact us, you'll actually talk to a real rider who knows what the heck they're talking about. Give us a shot. You won't be disappointed. Now, let's move on to reason number two why I love this shock, and that is how dang simple it is to tune this new RC2T damper. I know it's easy to get lost in the clicks when you're setting up fancy suspension, but RockShox is putting an end to that. By cutting down on the total number of clicks and being able to see exactly how many clicks you have at a glance, setting the suspension up is pretty dang straightforward. All your compression and HBO adjusters only have five possible settings, way less than any other high-end suspension product. With so few clicks, it's easy to assume that you won't have the range of adjustability to tune your suspension to be buttery smooth, but just like your friend who thinks that the gap between his knee pads and his shorts is sick, you're wrong. Oh! RockShox has struck a balance between a wide range of adjustability and also a usable number of clicks. You don't have to go two or even three clicks to feel something anymore. Now, every single click is gonna have a direct impact on how your shock performs. RockShox has also claimed to have eliminated what they call crosstalk. From your high and your low speed compression, adjusting one of them won't influence the other. This definitely helps with tuning because once you've found how much low speed compression you like, adjusting your high speed compression won't mess that up. Once I found the right spring rate, I was able to set the Super Deluxe coil up on the very first ride, which I have never been able to do with another shock. Even with all the compression and rebound adjusters just in their middle setting, the suspension felt great right out of the box and only required some really quick bracketing to fully dial it in. I ended up at plus one click of low speed compression and plus one click of high speed compression and 14 clicks from closed of the rebound to get the shock fully dialed in. This gave me a great balance of that supple ground hugging traction that we love from coil shocks, as well as a little bit of playfulness to keep things interesting. The level of composure that the super deluxe coil delivers through chattery sections like breaking bumps or webs of roots is very impressive. This shock was pretty indifferent to whatever I threw at it, whether that was pulling for ambitious doubles or just death gripping through chunky impacts. And I ended up running a faster rebound than I usually opt for. This made my rear end feel happier to take repeated impacts and also have a little spring in its step when I was popping off little trail features. Another little feature that just makes so much sense on the RC2T damper is the little tick marks outside on the adjusters to tell you exactly where you are in your compression or your HBO circuits. You can just look down and see exactly how many clicks you're running without having to get out the multi-tool and count all your clicks. If this shock wasn't incredibly straightforward to set up, I would be way more excited about this feature, but I just don't feel the need to turn that knob that often with this shock. RockShox also offers bike-specific tunes for their new shocks. This means that just like those super fancy boutique shocks that you see in those crazy dream build videos, your Super Lux coil can be tuned specifically for the bike that you install it on to get the absolute most performance out of your shock. Custom tuning is gonna be most important for riders whose weight is farther out on either side of the spectrum, either under 140 pounds or over about 210 pounds or if you're a very particular and experienced rider who can actually feel the shortcomings of their current shock tune. Unfortunately, this is not a job for most home mechanics because the shock requires a full teardown to get access to that shim stack. At the time of filming this, the custom tuning program is still in its infancy, and it's been a little tough to get our hands on the parts that we need to build those very precise shim stacks. And we're hoping that RockShox develop this program a little bit further in the future. In previous generations of their rear shocks, RockShox has sold shocks specific for bikes that already have the ideal tune for that rear suspension. So they might bring that back in the future, but it's hard to say for now. The third and final reason that we are huge fans of this shock is pretty simple, and that's the value of it. At $549 for the ultimate spec, there aren't any other shocks at this price point that offer this level of customization, performance, and reliability that you can expect from the Super Deluxe coil. Between the custom tuning, hydraulic bottom out adjuster, and just flat out impressive traction that this shock gives you, this has quickly become my favorite coil shock on the market. No other coil shock has all these features, and the ones that come close are almost twice as expensive. This shock would be a perfect fit on any bike where you're looking for ultimate traction. Whether you're a racer trying to squeeze out every last millisecond, or if you're a weekend warrior who really appreciates getting the most of the performance that you can out of your shiny two-wheeled machine, this shock is gonna be great for you. Even if you love climbing as much as you love descending, this is a great coil shock to buy. With the extra traction that a coil shock offers, it's been easier to clean those really technical moves where just spinning the rear tire a little bit costs me a dab. And this climb switch, it gives me a really solid climbing platform that really surprised me. It seriously doesn't bob at all while you're pedaling and is perfect for those long fire roads. All right, we have been tooting this shock's horn for a bit now. Is there anything we didn't like about this shock? We do really wish that RockShox offered the coil springs in 25 pounder increments. 
With the 50 pound jumps between spring weights, it's super common to be caught in between them and have to compromise. You'll notice that I've been running spring decks on my shock, and that's just because the only way that I can get the spring rate that I need on my Spire. Well, that's about everything we have to say about the Super Deluxe Coil for now. If you wanna buy one of these shocks or any other suspension product, check out lostco.com and you can get free shipping on most orders over $49 in the United States. Make sure to like and subscribe to never miss a video and we'll see you again later. See ya.